You're listening to Trax FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at traxfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Trax FM Official. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the second hour of Tracks Momentum. Today's interview features called W Talk, where we delve into thought provoking topics that matter to women. And on today's show, we'll be talking about blood donation and iron deficiency. And to help us understand this topic a little better, I have in the studios our special guest, Dr. Christina Lee Lai Ling. She's the head of the Department of Transfusion Medicine at University of Malaya Medical Center. Dr. Christina, good morning and welcome to W Talk. Hello, Anil. Good morning. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Yeah, the pleasure is ours, and I understand this is your, mm. this is not your first time on tracks. You've been uh, yes, a I've regular been on our show. Before. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for taking time off. Thank to be you with for us. inviting me. Yeah, yeah. And also for our listeners, don't forget that uh, you can also catch the interview uh, via Trax FM's official YouTube channel. Uh, there you can uh, get a glimpse of uh, what's happening in the studios and uh, take a look at our guests as well. Now, Doctor, without further ado, uh, we'll jump in straight into our discussion today, which is, um, I should say, it's Iron Talk. We're talking yeah, about donor essentials. Talk. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Dr. Christina, if someone is looking to donate blood here in Malaysia, mm-hmm. what's the ballpark hemoglobin level that they should aim for? Okay, mm. thanks, Anil. So, um, in Malaysia, uh, uh, the minimum uh, hemoglobin uh, that a person can donate blood for men, it will be 13.5 gram per deciliter. And for women, it will be 12.5 gram per deciliter. So, this is the minimum hemoglobin for a person to show that their blood, um, in their blood, uh, the hemoglobin is enough, is good enough for them to donate to another person. Because uh, in blood donation, we typically do not take anything more than 13% of the total blood volume from a person. So, example, it based on the weight of the blood donor as well. Sometimes we have a smaller, more petite female donors, so we would t- take less blood from them to not cause them to have any iron depletion or I- any uh, effects of iron deficiency in the future. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, speaking about low hemoglobin levels mm-hmm. among blood donors, mm-hmm. what do you think is the major suspect that's causing? Uh, uh, the depletion in the hemoglobin level. Yeah, thanks, Anil. Uh. So typically, when a person wants to donate blood, which is very good because blood donation is actually an altruism act. So uh, the first thing we need to know is we do a capillary uh, blood check on the fingertip to see how much is the hemoglobin. Now we used to think that this uh, uh, um, just a point, uh, just a. Uh, uh, you know, just check your capillary blood on the fingertip is very accurate, but actually it is not so, actually. It just reflects, like, uh, okay, the hemoglobin is good enough to donate blood, but it doesn't show what is our storage iron. Mm. So typically, I like to think about our iron as a, a functional iron. Usually, our iron, we put that in the iron in our body. Some Most of them are functional, about 50% to 55% of them is in a function where you can see from your blood test. And another 40% is actually in our storage. So mm. what we check on our blood is like our cash. If you have enough cash, you can go yeah, out and buy it's things. It's like money that's left. When, yes. you, when you run out of money, that's when you start yes, getting worried. Yes, yes. <laughs> so the one that uh, we are always uh, concerned about is actually the iron storage, which yeah. is actually about 40% of our iron is actually stored in our storage pool. Mm. So we can only test this with actually more blood tests, uh, biochemistry tests, mm. such as the serum ferritin. Mm. So go, coming back to uh, uh, in a uh, blood donation setting where we just check a capillary blood, typically a low hemoglobin uh, in a blood blood donor less than 12.5 we do not allow them to donate blood Mm. now what could be the common reasons most of the time if let's say this is a female blood donor we were thinking we we usually think about physiological cause first is it just have a menstrual blood loss and Mm. is it too much menses or sometimes um, our diet is not good enough we are not taking iron rich food or oh, what is the diet? Sometimes vegetarian. I'm not saying all vegetarians, mm. but some veg- uh, many studies have shown that uh, vegetarians is more increased risk of iron uh, depletion. Mm. The other thing is uh, sometimes we do have um, uh, donors who donate quite more, uh, very very frequent, mm. and yet they do not compensate their iron loss from blood donation. That can also cause mm. iron depletion. At the same time, Malaysia, we are actually in the Mediterranean belt and yeah. thalassemia can be quite common. Mm. But thanks to our um, uh, nationwide screening, thalassemia screening program, mm. we can already identify a thalassemia carrier or so by the time they become an adult as a potential blood donors. Mm. So sometimes uh, thalassemia patients, they can also have um, very low hemoglobin that is not suitable to donate blood. Right. Yeah. 
Now, right. uh, I, I came across a study that said that regular blood donation mm-hmm. can lead towards a reduction of yes. hemoglobin levels um, yes. in our bodies. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to sort of, you know, dissect this and focus it on women. Mm-hmm. Um, moving away from blood donation, mm-hmm. now, women experience something called menstruation every yes. month. Yes. Due to heavy menstruation, especially mm-hmm. when they're reaching their 40s mm-hmm. menopause level, mm-hmm. When they're experiencing that, mm. will that also affect? Can you share your thoughts on how that affects the iron um, iron loss? Iron loss, yeah. yes. Sure, Anil. So, what we typically see in a lifespan of a woman, so by the time you are seventeen, you can start donating blood because there's a legal age of donating blood. So, women uh, typically they will donate. Um, uh, the female uh, and male ratio of blood donors are typically quite the same during their twenty to thirties, and by thirties, a lot of women go through childbearing age. That's when you know um, blood loss um, from childbearing and also pregnancy, breastfeeding, so they would be deferred. So that we can see the percentage of female donors coming down in the childbearing age. Then, as a woman going into menopausal age, uh, post-childbearing, they have a good um, time of um, uh, no more childbearing age. So that is then um, the, the iron stores are slowly compensated. Mm. And as if some, some of them have a very irregular menstrual bleed and mm. things like that, they can have iron depletion as well as they go into the perimenopausal mm. stage. So what we typically see is is, uh, in a childbearing age group women mm. um, because of menstrual loss and also the um, childbearing and all these pros- natural processes mm. there is less blood donors during this age group and during this group as well uh, during this age group as well because the iron store is much more needed in average a man will need uh, approximately about 6.7 milligram iron mm. and a woman need about 11.4 because women regularly lost blood. That's like three yeah. times more than yes, what men need. Yes, mm. but when we talk about blood donation, a woman and men, if they are of uh, 55 kilogram, they, can, mm. they are donating the same amount of blood. Okay. Right? So, as you can see, the same amount of blood in the whole blood, you will also lose iron. So, if we were to do a head-to-head comparison, for example, if a woman donate 450 mils for blood donation, in this donated blood, they will co- um, it contains 225 milligrams of iron. Mm. It's about 10% of her iron store. Mm. Whereas for a man, if he were to donate 450 mils of uh, blood donation, it also contains 20, 225 grams of milligrams of iron. Mm. It is only 5.5% of his total iron store. Okay. okay. So it is already not equivalent. Mm. Mm. Therefore, actually, on the blood bank setting, we, we do not really encourage women to donate as regular as men. As men. Uh, certain mm. countries like India... Virtually, um, most of the donors, uh, you can see a very high percentage of male donors, mm. simply because also in in this uh, India's background, many are vegetarian. Right. So vegetarian diet and uh, predisposed to also the women, also all these physiological factors, the women hemoglobin are much lesser. So yeah. um, consuming a vegetarian diet mm-hmm. promotes the replenishment of blood in our system. Is okay. that fair to say that? Uh, so for vegetarian diet, so mm. um, there is actually two different school of thoughts. Mm. Some vegetarians um, would think that I will just uh, get my iron from iron-rich food. There mm. is a lot of iron-rich food, for mm. example, spinach, mm. uh, legumes, beans, and etc. Tofu and things like dal, even yeah. dal. Uh, these are very high in iron food. But in comes coming back to the biochemistry, Actually, the meat-based uh, food, actually, the iron is easier to absorb. For example, liver or um, red meat. The, the iron content is much higher in this uh, non-vegetarian food source mm. and it's also easier to absorb by our gut. Uh, so, therefore, um, there are two schools. Uh, some vegetarians will complement their diet with iron supplements and mm. some do not. So, that really depends. Okay. But I strongly urge um, uh, to get the iron study checked regularly if okay. you intend to start a vegetarian, vegetarian diet. Vegetarian diet. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, my next uh, question, Doctor, I'm going to break it down to two parts. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about, I want to touch on um, what do we do to enhance the iron content in our body? Mm-hmm. And then I will talk about how do we instantly sort of replenish the iron that we supposedly would have lost mm-hmm. after donating blood. So, because um, I'm sure our listeners would be wondering right now, right? So, if I donate blood according to the um, amount that uh, Dr. Christina just mentioned, mm-hmm. how do I instantly, you know, once I step out mm-hmm. of the blood donation campaign, what do mm-hmm. I first have to consume so that my body is able to start mm-hmm. replenishing the iron that it mm-hmm. has lost? Your yeah. thoughts, doctor. Mm. All right. So, um, typically, after we donate one unit of whole blood, like in Malaysia setting, we have 350 mils or 450 mils. 
our body take an average of 70 to 150 days to compensate all this iron loss. Therefore, you cannot donate a whole blood uh, very regularly. You can only do it after 90 days or so. Mm. So um, uh, immediately after, and we are very blessed because in Malaysia, most of our blood donation center, after blood donation, we give out iron supplement and folic acid okay. to our blood donors. Mm. However, this is not the full dose. You probably need more than more that. Than you that. Typically, we give like one or two weeks to the blood donor. Huh. But it's quite sad. Sometimes our blood donor may feel, oh, I don't need it because I'm a healthy blood donor. But what we do not think about is actually the iron that we lost during the blood donation. Okay. So um, to, to, to compensate iron loss, I typically um, to encourage all our blood donors, especially women, mm. to um, uh, take the iron tablets, iron supplements or uh, folic acid together after the blood donation and also to take more iron rich food okay yes. okay great folic acid and iron supplements mm-hmm, yeah yeah all right dr christina thank you very much for sharing your thoughts mm-hmm. we'll go in for a quick break when we come mm-hmm. back we'll try to uh, find out more on how mm-hmm. uh, iron gets absorbed into our system yeah sure sure for our listeners who are just tuning in i'm speaking to dr christina Li Lai ling she's the head of the department of transfusion medicine at university of malaya medical center and today we're speaking about blood donation and iron deficiency in women keep it right here on w talk attracts momentum Inspiration, achievement, experience, motivation, empowerment. All this on W Talk every Friday, 11:15 a.m. right here on Tracks FM. Welcome back to W Talk on Tracks Momentum. I'm Anil on the mic, and today I'm speaking to Dr. Christina Li Lai Ling, the head of Department of Transfusion Medicine at uh, University Malaya Medical Center. And today's topic is on iron, not iron, the raw mineral, but iron, the nutrition that is needed in our mm-hmm. body. Dr. Christina, welcome back to W Talk. Thank you, Anil. <laughs> All right, now, Doctor, we're going to break it down. Mm-hmm. Now, how exactly is iron absorbed in our body, mm-hmm. and how vital is this? nutrition of iron mm-hmm. for women especially yeah all right so well this is our, always our exam questions during our medical <laughs> oh, school really? okay. it's so complicated so you have it at the back of your head <laughs> yeah okay so i'll try to simplify yes, it yes well iron is a vital element in all of us right mm. so um it is very important to uh, iron is part of to create new red blood cell carry oxygen around our bodies mm. and also part of our immune system as well and you'll be surprised actually most of our iron in our body 50 per 50 to 55 percent of them are actually in our red blood cell what we call a functional iron so they are sitting there in all our red blood cells so if our, we lose blood and our iron will also be lost in our blood and another 40 percent sits in our storage iron this sits in our liver and also our macrophage and these are our storage like our fixed deposit mm. so the one the cash is actually in our red blood cell hemoglobin and the rest they are circulating around our body they can be in our bone marrow or they are just circulating uh, and carried by the proteins now, we usually get our iron from two main sources. 5% only comes from our diet, actually. Mm. Uh, it's not all our iron comes from our diet. And 95% are actually recycled from the red blood cell. You know, our red blood cell, actually, we make new red blood cell and our red blood cell break down every day. Okay. So all this breakdown of red blood cell, they're actually the iron is actually recycled to be used in the functional iron part. Mm. And typically from our diet, the iron is actually absorbed in our gut. So once mm. we eat the iron-rich food, the iron will be absorbed in our gut. And iron actually exists in two forms. Mm. The Fe2+, plus, like, you know, biochemistry, yeah. they call the ferrous form. And also the Fe3+, plus, the ferric, which is the rust, mm-hmm. rustiness, mm-hmm. okay? So the Fe2+, plus is actually can is actually acid-soluble. So mm. they go into our stomach and they can be absorbed in our uh, duodenum, in our guts. Mm. Now, once it's absorbed, it can be um, stored as a ferritin and it's bound to the proteins and transport to a bone marrow to make new red blood cell. So the right. process begins. And at the same time, we also um, uh, um, have this uh, control, cent- uh, control um, protein, the mm. hepcidin. Actually, they, this hepcidin, they will be there to regulate because we don't want too much iron. We can have iron overload, overload. and we also don't want too much, uh, too little iron. So they are there monitoring how's our iron stored in the whole mm. body, whether we should absorb more or absorb less. 
So, so you, you, you spoke mm. about, sorry, doctor, you spoke about red blood cells. Mm. As I know, red blood cells are essential to bring oxygen yes. to the body. Yes. So is that why maybe people who lack iron in their mm. body have shortness of breath? Yes, you are like, right, Anil. Mm, yes, mm. you are right. Therefore, because when iron is deficient, that's the final stage of iron deficient anemia, you can see all the signs and symptoms. For example, you look pale and you are very weak, very tired because there's not enough iron in your hemoglobin to carry the oxygen to refresh us. So you're, you can uh, a patient can be easy easily tired and the nails and the hair are brittle and you know not shiny mm -hmm. and at the same time uh, sometimes you can have um, difficulty in breathing because of lack of oxygen and mm. things like that and um, interestingly a lot of um, uh, people like to eat ice uh, ice craving is actually can be one of the sign of uh, iron deficient. So typically wow. the stage actually um, uh, at first we have iron sufficient, right? Any normal person, iron sufficient. Then you will go to uh, iron depletion. Hmm. Uh, iron depletion, but you have you still have a normal hemoglobin. That means the storage, the fixed deposit is actually affected. Hmm. But the cash bank is still adequate for our day-to-day -day usage. Right. Then it will go down to iron deficient mm. and finally iron deficiency anemia where the fixed deposit is gone mm. and also the cash is also gone mm. so the hemoglobin will tell very low hemoglobin mm. and at the same time the ferritin the storage iron the fixed deposit is also very low okay. so it goes this stage uh, okay doctor could you um you know give us an in-depth mm -hmm. explanation mm -hmm. on um some of the telltale signs mm -hmm. that we can slowly start seeing mm -hmm when our body experiences a deficit in iron? Mm -hmm. What are the things that we can look out for and it may be ring a bell and say, oh, I'm experiencing this or maybe mm. I am experiencing mm -hmm. iron deficiency. So, mm. yeah, in, in, so like I was sharing, um, it has actually four stages typically. Okay. So sometimes when it's uh, iron deficient, uh, iron sufficient, you don't have any sign, you are just a normal person. But when you are going into this iron depletion, it's very, um, uh, you don't really have any telltale sign. Because uh, mostly uh, you just feel normal. It's just probably a bit tired. You may think that you have a busy schedule. Typically, it is only until the iron deficiency anemia stage where you can see all this full-blown pale tiredness, your hemoglobin drop, bitter mm. and things like that. But I would encourage um, uh, most of our blood donors, they will tell, they are very actually conscious about, hey, what's my hemoglobin today? Mm. Can I donate blood? Yeah. So... Um, if you start to feel um, sometimes, um, especially sometimes uh, blood loss, uh, hemorrhoid or uh, parietal bleeding, sometimes this is something very private. We dare not to tell anybody, mm, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we should seek medical treatment, mm. get our blood test done and mm. see whether uh, we are slowly losing our blood and also our mm. iron from the blood. Which is mm. oftentimes an overlooked aspect of our well-being to get yes. our lab work done for our yes. bloods as well. Yes. How often should one go for a regular blood analysis doctor okay so typically in Malaysia once mm. a pregnant woman um, is booked uh, mm. when they are confirmed to be pregnant mm. uh, usually we'll do a full blood uh, count to know what is a hemoglobin level and things like that mm. typically we do not do the iron study until um, we are suspecting maybe this uh, could be iron uh, depletion or etc so um, for anybody after 40 women after 40 I would encourage a yearly medical checkup mm. yeah including pap smear uh, breast examination and the rest uh, mm. women have of women wellness um, but for blood uh, we do, some of us have uh, blood fear needle fear we still need to see a lot of things from our blood yeah. we need to analyze using a hemoglobin uh, analyzer and also a biochemistry analyzer so we still need to get our blood tested to know all this okay. yeah so the mm -hmm. best would be at least mid bare minimum, bare minimum once a year yeah once a year if all is fine maybe in uh, three time uh, tr uh, three years later or five mm. years later yeah okay. now let's get a picture of uh, the uh, situation on ground in Malaysia right now, mm. doctor. How mm. how common is iron depletion among blood donors in our country? Mm. Okay, mm. right. Um, iron deficiency or even anemia is actually a global problem. So mm. uh, uh, one is actually um, so we are not also spared because um, iron deficiency is very common. We have multiple study done in Malaysia, mm. um, like for UMMC study, we had a study done in year two thousand two and also year two thousand five. Actually. It depends. About 5 to 20% of our female regular blood donors, they could be iron depletion. So especially female regular blood donor, meaning to say they donate blood more than twice per year. Mm. Most of the time, uh, first time blood donor, they are still well, the iron store is good and yeah. things like that. Mm. But if they donate more regularly, more than twice per year, mm. then they are more prone to iron deficient. Mm. 
sometimes we think that male donors are okay. Uh, a male will not have this iron depletion problem. That is also not true. We also find about um, a, a small percentage, not as uh, uh, common as female, a small percentage of our male donors, our male regular blood donors could be also iron depletion. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. And and how do we treat that uh, iron deficiency anemia among blood donors? All right. So mm. um, typically, once um, by the screening um, by the capillary uh, blood test, we know that they do not pass the pre-donation hemoglobin. Then we will not allow them to donate. So um, we will because from our uh, hemoglobinometer, we can agar agar know uh, what is the level. Okay. Let's mm. say less than ten, and we will ask them to see our medical officer mm. whether they have any blood loss, reason, illness, or things like that, which can contribute. To to any loss. But if the very borderline case, we will advise them for high iron diet. So I just want to highlight to all our audience here, having uh, having cereal and coffee tea is a bad combination because tea and coffee inhibit iron absorption. I myself love cereals with coffee in the morning, especially black coffee. But Tea and coffee inhibits yeah, iron. Yes, wow. yes, because they contain certain substances that inhibit the iron absorption. Mm. However, if you take like vitamin C rich fruits, mm. um, fr uh, fruits uh, with um, uh, uh, iron rich food, it is increasing your absorption. Uh, so typically, apart from taking iron supplements, mm. we need to increase our, our vitamin C intake. So consuming iron is one, mm. but at the mm. same time, our body is having the ability to absorb that iron is yes. also another crucial yes. aspect. And wow. what, what, how, do we, how do we strike a balance <laughs> with that, doctor? <laughs> so uh, typically, we think of cereal because cereals actually contain certain substances that will inhibit the iron absorption. Uh, but right. uh, uh, like a typical uh, a red meat meal with um, alcohol or wine, actually, they uh, uh, is actually encourage inhibition of uh, and current absorption of iron. Okay. So red meat with uh, red wine is actually a good combination. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll spare the wine for the conversation. Yeah. Focus right. on the meat. But anyway, we'll go in for a quick break, Doctor. Mm. When we come back, uh, we will talk about how we can increase iron storage in our body here mm. on W Talk. For all the listeners who just tuned in, I'm today speaking to Doctor Christina Lee Lai Ling. She's the head of Department of Transfusion Medicine at University Malaya Medical Center. And today on W Talk, we're talking about blood donation and iron deficiency. We'll be right back after. After a quick break, keep it right here. W Talk, where we bring inspiring women from all walks of life. Catch us live at RTM Click and also Tracks FM's official Facebook page every Friday and be inspired. 11:15 a.m. to 11:45 a.m. only on Tracks FM, your favorite station. Absolutely, Trax FM, your favorite station. We're back on air again on today's edition of W Talk here on Trax Momentum. I'm your host, Anil on the mic, and today I'm speaking to Dr. Christina Li Lai Ling. She's the head of Department of Transfusion Medicine at University Malaya Medical Center. Dr. Christina, welcome back to W Talk. Thank you, Anil. <laughs> now, the golden question how mm. do we increase? Iron yeah, in our yeah. Bodies. yeah, this is one of the F frequently asked questions. Mm. Yeah, so um, I think specifically for women, um, once we donate blood, I wouldn't encourage women to donate blood every three or four monthly um, because um, we are our, our iron store and our iron loss is not like the same as a man. Mm. So uh, for women, I would encourage us to um, uh, space out your blood donation, mm. right? And you do not have to donate a big bag. Sometimes um, uh, we have a 350 meals or 450 meals. Um, uh, maybe you can choose to donate a smaller bag in, in, uh, uh, to reduce your iron loss during blood donation. And post-donation, typically we give our blood donors a, a supplement of iron supplement. Please complete it. Mm. Typically, our blood donors will yeah. just take one or two days. Okay, I'm fine because there's no sign and symptoms for early should iron woman, loss. Should women refrain from donating blood when they're menstruating? Ah, yes. Mm. All right. Usually, typically, um, three days during the first three days of menstruation, uh, women should not donate blood. Okay. But after that, uh, after day three, they are allowed to donate blood. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay. So um, there are a lot of uh, food uh, which is rich in iron. Okay. So for the vegetable sauce, spinach is number one. I think all of us know yes. about Popeye, the movie, Popeye, right? The, the Sailor Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Sailor Man. Mm. So spinach is very, very good and very high in iron. However, you do have to take a lot of spinach. Um, so the iron content is quite equivalent to a, a tablet of iron tablets. Mm. And potatoes, um, cereals, tofu, um, dows, lentils, mm. you know, they are also very high in iron. Almond as well. Uh, what about uh, moringa, doctor? Yeah, yeah, mm. moringa as well. Mm. So these are very good source of iron from food, uh, vegetables, uh, mm. raisin, um, uh, dates and things, things like that. Mm. But uh, if we were to compare for uh, iron um, rich food in the meat, that's definitely much higher. Mm. Uh, one of the highest would be liver and red meat and uh, also cockles, kerang. 
right? Yeah, in our kuih tiao. Yeah, cockles is one of that. So, sambal, um, uh, kerang sambal is actually one of the good source of iron. Mm. Um, uh, chicken, fish are not so much uh, um, uh, as compared to red meat. Um, so these are eggs also has a quite good uh, source of i um iron. Mm. So these are all very uh typical food that we eat day in and day out. Okay, yeah. Okay. So um yeah, and uh, another um, reminder to all our, our listeners here: mm. if you are taking cereals for breakfast, <laughs> uh, try not to mix with coffee or tea. Perhaps you should do it after uh, you know one or two hours after the okay. cereals because uh, it reduces it blocks your iron absorption. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so just for perhaps uh, cereals with milk would do. Yeah. Yeah. And cereals then, with milk. Mm. Then and maybe if we need our coffee, we go right. for it later. So it's not completely yeah. refraining away from coffee. It's yeah. just that when you're having your breakfast, yeah, don't yeah. mix it up. Yes, coffee. yes. Uh, yeah. An hour later, as you say. Yes, right. yes. And uh, taking uh, um, uh, citrus, uh, vitamin mm. C rich food mm. can also uh, encourage the iron absorption. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now, Doctor, just well, I want to go back a little bit to mm. um, blood donation. Yeah. Right? Uh, because I read, because I was doing some research before mm. having this conversation with mm. you, and uh, I read somewhere that our body loses about 200 to 250 milligrams of iron, iron yes. every time we donate blood. Yes. When we roll up our sleeves, mm. is this the same mm. for women or, and men? Okay. Or is this a myth that women are the ones who end up losing more iron compared to men? Okay. Mm. So if we were to calculate by um, the, the, the volume that we lose, okay, if I were to compare just a head-to-head comparison, a women donate 450 mils of whole blood, a man also donate 450 mils of whole blood. However, we must know that the men, the total blood volume is higher than a woman. Mm. Uh, so if our total blood volume is higher, we will ha- naturally have higher in iron. Okay. So this same amount of product that is out from the body, uh, both this from the fem- from the female donor, it will have two hundred and twenty five milligram of iron, mm. and from the man is also two hundred and twenty five gram of iron. Iron, right? In terms of iron, they are all same, same in the product, the end product. However. From the women, this is 10% of her total iron store. Wow. And from the man, it's about 5% only from her his total iron store. Why? Why does that happen for uh, women? Because of the total blood volume. The, right. the more blood we have, the higher iron that we have. And right. not forgetting that after a woman leaves the donation center, mm. she will have a menstrual bleed yes. as well. Yes. And men also have the androgen hormones, the male hormone. Mm. These male hormones are going to encourage um, erythropoietin production. Erythropoietin mm. will encourage iron absorption as well. EPO. Yes. Mm, so mm. these are synergistic in fact for a male. Right. But whereas for a female, they, they're going to lose blood again from menstrual loss. So therefore, um, uh, uh, a female will lose mm. more iron in blood donation compared to a man. And particularly in a female regular blood donor. Right. Yeah, not right. the first time. Because first time, is uh, like they, 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 you know, they are mm. starting point yeah, the same. Yeah. 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 So maybe this uh, goes to show that, uh, you know, men should be donating more blood compared <laughs> yeah. to women. Spare the women. Yeah. Which leads me to my next question, mm. Doctor. It's a W talk. We want to inspire mm. people out yeah. there. We also want to send out a message of, mm. you know, positivity. Mm. Talking about blood donation, Mm-mm. from your perspective, Doctor, mm. how important is it to donate blood? And All why right. should we be doing it, Doctor? Yes, yes. Mm. Well, uh, blood donation is actually, uh, blood is actually a natural finite and precious resource. So we cannot, for, for now, we cannot actually um, make blood uh, from, yes, there are a lot of people doing, uh, trying uh, on research uh, level, um, trying to produce red blood cell from uh, stem cell and things like that. There are many ongoing tri- trials and studies. But for now, for the blood re- uh, for transfusion to help another person, it is mostly sourced from blood donors. Mm. So donating blood is actually an act of altruism. So we donate to help others without any compensation. In yeah. Malaysia, donating blood is voluntary and we mm. do not pay our blood donors. Therefore, it is actually an act of altruism, mm. a, act, a heroic act. Heroic you can act. be a hero, yes. you know. You yes. don't have to be a doctor to save life, but you can be a blood uh, donor. Because mm. the blood that we donated, we keep in the blood bank, there will be some patients, whether um, having blood loss or mm. a dengue patient needing the platelet or a bleeding patient needing the plasma Mm. eventually the blood will be used for somebody so okay. it's actually a, a, a very um, altruistic act okay. so and also in Malaysia our blood donation uh, blood donor rate is still very low mm. uh, we are about 2.5% currently as compared to other countries where 8% of the population could be a blood donor as we face with the aging population, we know the sick, uh, the, uh, the sick and the old and the extreme age group, they might need more blood for transfusion. Yeah. Yeah. So it, we are having this healthy population, um, uh, you know, 17 to 60, the healthy population. 
to support this uh, yes. yeah, aging population, mm. right? So definitely, blood. if we can, we should be a blood donor. It should be a privilege, but it's not a priority. Mm. Yeah, if we are healthy enough to yeah. help other, we should become a blood donor. Okay. But for female, uh, for women, especially for especially for <laughs> yes. this uh, channel, yeah. uh, yes, we can become blood donor. But we space out our donation, space out donation and uh, finish all our iron supplements and mm. take iron rich food after the donation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Men can be heroes all the time, but yes. women have yes. to space out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take next. your time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and I like, I really like. You know, this is what I love about these conversations mm. because you know you get sparks of of you know moments where some. Thing is lighter because you mentioned mm. that blood is finite. Mm, yes, it's a finite, finite natural yeah. resource. It's, yes, you know it's like uh, not like and, and it's a natural resource Mm-mm. that is something new to us. Mm. But now we know that it's finite. It's mm. very precious. Yes, and it's something that it's within our bodies itself. Yes, right? yes, and we can do our part to help another person. Definitely, right? great, yeah. great, great. Yeah. Any parting words before I let you go for this uh, show? All right. Christina? Okay. Mm. To all our listeners here, thank you for listening. And uh, especially now that we are in a uh, uh, Christmas season, uh, end of the year, there will be a lot of people traveling and things like that. And naturally, our blood donation rates will come down. So I pledge all of you before, if you're healthy and well, and of course women have a very good iron store <laughs> yeah please come forward to donate blood in any of our nearest blood bank um, uh, you can donate blood uh, for example here in Kuala Lumpur uh, we are uh, UMMC we are also a donation center or also nation, national blood center or hospital clung please donate and uh, save life yeah because typically blood banks during this uh, holiday season balik kampung phenomena we tend to experience a drop in donation rate Right. Yeah. However, our patients are still coming in. We are still 24 hours open for our service. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank yeah. you very much, Dr. Christina, for spending mm-hmm. your time this morning. We look forward to having you in the studios again. Thank you. You yeah. take care. Thanks, Anil. All right. And that was uh, Dr. Christina Lee Lai Ling. She is uh, the head of Department of Transfusion Medicine at uh, University Malaya Medical Center. And uh, today we spoke about the blood donation and iron deficiency status in our country. Coming up in uh, less than 10 minutes, we'll be crossing over to the RTM News Center for the 12 o'clock news updates. And then right after that, I'll be back for the third hour of Tracks Momentum. Keep it right here. Stay tuned. You're listening to Tracks FM's podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, more podcasts are available on the RTM Click app and website. Let us know what you think. Please email us at tracksfm.rtm at gmail.com. Like and follow us on social media at Tracks FM Official.